Uh, it's only to get too excited about. I can't get too excited about our tracks. In this. On this, on the other hand, I can. So, I don't want CDS pricing. As I said, if you look at Appendix 1, there are some very accessible notes on uh, CDS pricing where you view it. No arbitrage principles as an interest rate swap. You've got the fixed and the floating. The value of both must be identical. Value of each <laughs> must be identical. So, given that you know what the fixed is, you can work out the floating, if you, if you think about it. Uh, and, of course, you did the two parameters in CDS pricing are the default probability of the reference name and the recovery rate, or loss given default, in the reference name in the event of default. Those two unknowns are parameters in CDS pricing. The default probability from first principles, if this was day one of the CDS market, I had nothing else to look at, I would look at the cash market prices and I would imply, extract default probability of those prices, and that's what the slides show in Appendix 1, I would extract the default probability from those market prices from the cash side. Uh, cash side of the same reference name, obviously. Okay. Nowadays, of course, uh, it's the same with interest rate derivatives. The tail wags the dog. It's the derivative contract that is the basis of pricing, not the cash market. But that's the first principles approach to pricing CDS. That's the first parameter, default probability. The second parameter is, of course, recovery rate, or loss given default. In other words, one minus recovery rate. That, as I said, is assumed. When you price a contract on day one, you make an assumption on recovery rate, let's say 40%, and you use that. Uh, and, of course, you can see how the recovery rate changes for... Cha uh, the pr sorry, how the price changes for changes in recovery rate. There is... Um, we don't go into it here. It's quite involved. There are issues to bear in mind if you are, you, if you are working out the hedge amount. If you're working out the hedge amount um, of notional... So you've got a loan or a bond on your balance sheet. You want to hedge how much CDS do you, how much notional CDS trans transact in. So you need to be aware of whether the loan or bond is trading above or below par, how much actual cash value at risk have you got, and secondly, what the recovery rate assumption you make in the event of default, because that's going to affect the, uh, not the price, but also the, the hedging amount. Uh, so I have a second title. Forgive me for referencing my own work, but this one here... Credit default swap basis looks at the hedge calculation uh, and also how you might want to work out uh, what numbers you use to work out the, the hedge calculation. Okay. Now, um, let's talk instead about the basis. So originally, if you go back to, as in my case I did, you go back to, let's say, 1998. Why 1998? Because that's when I happened to be in the market for this stuff. The market was only a couple of years old, um, and so you had a CDS book. And um, the, the risk managers or the product controllers wanted to verify that CDS price. The traders mark them at X. How can we verify it? So they used this asset swap pricing approach, okay? Because in theory, the price of the CDS and the asset swap must be the same. And I'll explain in a second why. Remember, this here is a more colorful version of the earlier slide that said... Um, with a bond and then you've got credit funding and interest rate. With the asset swap, you've got credit and funding. With the credit default swap, you've got credit. So if I strip away uh, the two other elements, I should have a price of pure credit, okay? To determine the theoretical price of credit risk, I would have an asset swap on one side and a CDS on the other. So let's say I have a CDS written on British Telecom and I have a British Telecom asset swap. So it's very easy to demonstrate using no arbitrage principles why the prices of those two must be the same. Because if I buy the bond in the asset swap and I buy protection on the, CD, on the bond's name, British Telecom, I have got a return coming in on the asset swap and I'm credit risk-free, aren't I? Because I've bought protection on it. So if I do that arbitrage trade, I buy the bond and I buy protection, if there's a difference in price between the two, I'm going to exploit that arbitrage, aren't I? They've got to be the same. So under the no arbitrage principles, the asset swap price for, this, for that reference name must be the CDS price of the same tenor. If I've got a five-year asset swap trading 100 over LIBOR, the CDS price of five-year CDS must be 100. Okay? Easy to demonstrate mathematically. Of course, a lot of old nonsense in practice because we know, <laughs> we just by observation, that the CDS trades above or below the asset swap. It never, there's never a non-zero basis ever in the history of the world. Right? And I've been studying this since 1998, observing it all the time. Less so in my old age. Who's got time to look at Bloomberg screens all the time? But in my old age, I've not been doing it much. But pre and post crash, the CDS basis is always non-zero. It's always going to be negative or positive. Okay? When I say CDS basis, I mean the difference between the CDS and the asset swap. CDS minus asset swap. By the way, another thing. Again, forgive me for referencing my own work, but you want to bear in mind what cash price do you take? The CDS price. There's only one. It's the price of the CDS. 
What cash price do I take? Do I take it spread over the swap? Do I take it spread over the treasury bond? Do I take it Z spread? Do I take it whatever spread? Okay, so there's more than one cash price when you do the basis calculation. There's only one CDS price, the CDS price. Okay, so there's some nuances there to bear in mind as well. Okay, now, um, having said that, that's how they used to value them on the product control risk management side. It's a little more nonsense. No one does that now because we know they're not the same. This does tell me something, though, because given the theory that the cash price must equal the CDS price, if there is a difference between the two, I should know why. I want to explain why, don't I, right? Because it's telling me something about the relative value of one versus the other. Right? It's telling me whether the cash is more in demand or the CDS is more in demand or there's some other factor driving it. Now, here is a set of factors that are more really pre-crash that might seek to explain why the CDS trades above, um, above the asset swap. Bond identity, special status, AAA stock trading below LIBOR, risk exposure of the CDS seller, counterparty risk of the default swap, credit default swap, buyer of protection. Supply and demand is a good one. Supply and demand is a very good one, okay? Um, bonds trading away from par, okay? Remember, a notional amount, the CDS is a par product, you're only ever dealing in notional amounts, whereas a bond trading above or below par has less cash value at risk. Uh, so I would suggest supply and demand, whoops, is a key factor. But the other key factor is the fact, is the fact, the other key factor is that, remember, one of them involves actual cash. The CDS, you just write a piece of paper and you start getting a premium coming in. Nice work if you can get it. The asset swap, you have to put up cash before you get the return. Cash has a value. In an environment of lots of cash coming out of everyone's ears, like in 2006, or paradoxically, in a crash environment, because of central bank action, cash coming out of everyone's ears. See, there's more euros in the EU banking market than we know what to do with, thanks to the ECB. Basically flooded the Euro interbank market with three-year cheap money at half a basis point, half a percent, all right? So that means, paradoxically, while bank funding costs are going up, there's no shortage of liquidity. But, of course, in 2008, that wasn't the case. In October 2008, you would never have seen, certainly for banks at least, a CDS trading um, above asset swap because cash had actual value. So that's a big driver of the basis as well, okay?